are guys, it's me, Corey, and we're talking about the fear of the Lord. I am just so gripped with this theme. You know, Shelly Hundley, one of our leaders here at the International House of Prayer, had a powerful encounter. It was very, uh, you know, gripping for our whole community here back in about 2002. The short of it is this, there's many aspects of the encounter, but one of the encounters is that Jesus was actually standing before her and he took two, he took, uh, two torches, like two fiery torches. And, and one was the love of God, or the first commandment, and the other one was the fear of the Lord. And the Lord took both of these torches and thrust them into Shelley's being and saying, you've got to have these two torches because right now they're like two foreigners in the land. Nobody knows much about the first commandment and nobody knows much about the fear of God, but it's gonna be these two torches together in unity that is gonna bring forth a generation after his own heart. And I believe that's what the Lord wants to do in this hour. He wants to thrust love of God, first commandment, and the fear of the Lord together. That's one of the other definitions, and I just want to talk about another definition of the fear of the Lord, is, uh, is this is how I've been defining the fear of the Lord, because most of us just have so many wrong views. You bring up fear, it stirs up so many negative emotions, but I, would, I want to tell you right now that the fear of the Lord, the fear of God, is the, it is the beginning of wisdom, it's the fruit of intimacy, that, that's the nature of true love, is fear, even in my marriage. I mean, I love my wife. I've been married for 13 years, in love with my wife. And, and, and because of the fear, because of the sacredness of what God has given us in our marriage, I have a holy fear on me not to do anything that would harm our union, that would harm our marriage. Therefore, there's a fear. And it's not like a, I have to, but there is a guarding of my life to not go in certain directions that would in any way harm what I've been given. Beloved, do you understand what you've been given? You have been given relationship. You have been given intimacy. You have been given access to the eternal God, to the Holy One of Israel, and that He is your Father. You have intimacy with Him through His Son Jesus, and that you have been called into the fellowship of the Godhead. Beloved, it doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't get any greater than this. You can't be given any more money worth more than this, any gift more than this. You have been given the holiest and most sacred thing in all the earth and all the heaven in time and eternity. And the response of this gift is fear. It's a fear of guarding what you've been given. But we need to even begin to think about what's been given. I believe that there's such a flippancy and a lack of the fear of God. It's because of the lack of the revelation of what we possess now in Christ Jesus. And when we grow in revelation of what we possess, it then puts on us a guarding. I don't know about you. I mean, there's been a couple of times maybe you've ever carried a large sum of money. Maybe in an airport or something like that and you're carrying a large sum of money. I don't know about you, but... But if I'm carrying a large sum of money, I, I am guarding it. I literally have my hands on it the whole time. I got it in my front pockets, and I'm looking down to make sure I've got it all where I want it all the time and making sure nobody's looking. Beloved, how much more? Worth more than a few thousand dollars. How about the eternal riches of intimacy with Jesus Christ? The fear of the Lord is that which protects intimacy. It's the fear of the Lord that protects intimacy. It's the fear of the Lord that's the grounds of intimacy. Because we rightly see Him, we fear Him, and therefore intimacy is released in that context. Well, I want to encourage you, I told you in one of the earlier podcasts, that, that I am just taking a lot of the verses on the fear of the Lord in this season, and I'm just praying through them here in the prayer room. I'm praying to my own heart. I told you about Jeremiah 3240. God, put your fear into my heart so I'd never depart from you, God. I'd encourage you to start praying that. There are so many good verses. I mean, Job 28, 28 says, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. He says this. He says in Psalm 19, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. I mean, think about that. The fear of the Lord is clean. You want a clean, bright spirit? Cultivate the fear of the Lord. Choose it with your choices. Cl uh, stay away from the things that would harm it and cling to the fear of the Lord. And the Bible says it's clean, which means this, that it will cleanse your spirit. It will bring a bright spirit, and you will touch eternity. Look at Psalm 25. It says, Who is the man who fears the Lord? It says, He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord. You want secrets? You want the secrets of God? It says, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. He says in 
Look at this. Psalm 31. It says, Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you. How about Psalm 33, 18 through 19? It says, The eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. How about Psalm 34, 1 through 11? The angel of the Lord, huh? In camps all around those who fear him. You want the angel of the Lord encampering around you? It says it. It says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. What I love about David and all the psalmists is there's no dichotomy. There's no difference between the fear of God and the love of God or the goodness of God and the fear of God. They're all one reality. It's your fearing is goodness. Here's another crazy verse. At the end of Hosea chapter 3, you got to look at this. It says that we are going to fear God and His goodness in the latter days. Fearing God's goodness in the latter days. Oh my goodness. Fearing His goodness. Look at some of these other verses. Psalm 86, 11, Unite my heart to fear your name. Psalm 112, Blessed is the man who fears God, delighting greatly in his commandments. It says this, Psalm 130, verse 4. Get a hold of this one. With you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. <laughs> I want to tell you what makes me fear God is when I've done some stupid thing and I come before Jesus and I say, God, I screwed up. Forgive me. I ask for the blood of Jesus to wash over me. And when that sense of clean, that sense of my conscience is clean and I get washed in the blood of Jesus, what is produced in me? A fear never to do what I just did. It's a clinging. Matter of fact, in the earlier passages in Deuteronomy, he says, I'm going to put my fear and you'll cleave. I'm going to cause you to cleave to me or cling to me. You know what forgiveness does? It makes you hate what you did and cling to him. Here's another just crazy verse, Proverbs 8:13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Hating evil is a byproduct of fear of the Lord. Not just kind of, I don't want it. No, hating it in the way he hates it. My goodness. And then the one, the famous one, Proverbs 9, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We pray all the time, God, give us wisdom. Give us the spirit of revel wisdom and revelation. Beloved, it's the fear of the Lord that's the grounds of growing in wisdom and revelation, which is this. It's the... It's the inward trembling. It's the inward awareness of who you're dealing with. And when you grow in that, that is the, the fruit and the beginning of wisdom and revelation. Well, there's so many verses. I could walk you through every one of these in the Psalms, in Isaiah. He says in Isaiah 8, 11, or 8, 13, he says, The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow. Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. My goodness, which means this, fear God. Jeremiah 32, it says in Isaiah 30, 33, it's talking about, uh, it says this, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Isaiah 11, when talking about the seven spirits of God resting on Jesus, the last one is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And it says that he delights greatly. His delight is in the fear of the Lord. My goodness. So many ones. There's one more that I love because a lot of us just think, well, the fear of the Lord is an Old Testament passage. Jesus says, I tell you, don't fear him who could cast your body only in, don't get, that can only kill your body. He says, but fear him who can take your body and your soul and to throw it into hell. He says, guys, I want you to get a bigger fear than man. I want to tell you one of the biggest problems in this generation is the fear of man, is the man-pleasing spirit. And one of the greatest ways to deal the death blow to the man pleasing or the fear of man is called the fear of God. It will deliver you from all other fears. Well, my prayer today is that you would grow in the fear of the Lord. And what, how you grow, you take these verses and you begin to speak them and pray them over your own life. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.